Idaho Falls Pediatrics, where you supporting kids in our community in 7 Questions with Emmy. Hey guys, welcome back to 7 Questions with Emmy. I'm Emmy Eaton, and my guest today is the popular face of Court TV, Vidi Politan hosts Closing Arguments and has over 20 years of experience reporting on some of the most high-profile cases in American history. Vinny was a prosecutor in New Jersey and had a private practice before joining Court TV. Vinny, welcome to 7 Questions. Great to be here. Hey. I studied all night, so I'm ready. Should we just hop into the questions? Um, wait, I have a question for you first. Okay, hey, deal. Do you know who this is? Is that Henry? Henry? That is your friend Henry Winkler, the Fonz. How about that? Cool. All right. So you got that right. Mm -hmm. Okay, question number one. What got you interested in a legal career? Uh, it's a genetic defect. Um, I was born with it. My father was a lawyer and a federal judge. My brother was a lawyer and, you know... He's older than I am, so they'd be sitting around the dinner table talking shop. And I was like, hey, I'd like to join that club. So um, just like my dad, just like my older brother, I went to law school, passed the bar, and then started practicing law. Question number two. What do you like better, being in a courtroom or being on TV? Oh, is that a trick question? Is there anything better than being on TV? Oh, wow. I, you know, the lights, the makeup, the cameras, the excitement. Um, I absolutely, absolutely enjoy being on TV. But I like talking about um, trials. I like covering trials. Um, but I, I think I only like to go to the courtroom if I'm going to be on TV to talk about it. So sure. these days, yeah, it's all about uh, TV, which is really my first love. It really was my first love. This this is what I studied in, in college. This is what I did growing up. I mean, I grew up with a camera in my hand, not a video camera, a Super 8 camera. Then I got a video camera in high school. And so really for me, uh, being on TV, it, it doesn't get any better than that, except being on Seven Questions with Emmy. Uh, well, I think that some other TVs are cooler than being on seven questions, but <laughs> um, what is the most memorable case that you have covered? There have been a lot. There have been a lot of cases through the years. Um, you know, picking a favorite trial is like picking a favorite child, but I do have a favorite child right now. But it changes. It depends how they're, what they're doing, how they're acting, and all that. But um, favorite trial or most memorable for me would be um, Casey Anthony. I don't like to say her name uh, because what she was accused of doing and what she was not convicted of doing. Uh, but it was that one, and it was down in Florida. It was really because um, we, I was there from the beginning. So mm -hmm. from the beginning, and I saw how America responded to that case, um, how the people showed up in Orlando to watch it in person. This was, you had to be there, Emmy. Well, I don't know if you were born yet, but you had to be there. You had to be there because, so there was a limited number of, of seats in the courtroom, but there were lots of people who wanted to get inside the courtroom. So they, would, they weren't allowed to be on the courthouse grounds until 5 a.m. So what did they do? They all lined up and slept overnight across the street. Then at five o'clock in the morning, when the sheriff's deputy would open up the line, they would run across the street and race and they would knock each other down trying to get first in line. It was, oh my, these people, these people. But they really, really wanted to be in there. And uh, I'll never forget that one. And there were a lot of moms that went to this trial. And you know what they did, Emmy? What? You know what they did? What was in Orlando? What else is in Orlando? Disney. That's right. So the trial was in the summertime. So what do you think mo all these moms said to their families? They're like, okay, you guys can go to Disney World. Well, I'm going to go to the courthouse or something like that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, first, they, I think they tricked their families. They're like, hey, everybody, let's go to Disney this summer. 
And then mom skedaddled to the courthouse and then dad and the kids went to Disney. So I think everybody had a good day every day. So yeah, that's dad, the most memorable for sure. Dad's told me a little bit about like the people that always line up on courthouses because he was recently in like May or April, I don't know. It, he was at um, Lori Daybell's trial. And so oh, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone was, that's where he met you. And um, he says like people camped out there and stuff like that. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like camping out overnight? Yeah, it's crazy. Outside a courthouse, not like around the fire making s'mores, but like, you know, just waiting to go in a courtroom. Here's the thing, though, Emmy, like if you camp out all night, what do you think those people smelled like when they got inside the courtroom? I know. Maybe they need to start putting like the like showers that they have at the beach at the courthouses. Like yeah, that would be a great idea. And for some of the lawyers, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You have interviewed and interrogated a lot of people. Can you share a few tips on what makes a good interviewer? Well, there's, see, here's how I learned how to do an interview. In the courtroom, questioning witnesses. So there's two ways to question a witness. There's direct and there's cross. So direct is probably more like how you'd want to do it on TV most of the time, which is the questions are short and the answers are long. And unfortunately, there are some people in my business, in our business, Emmy, because you're in the business too, who ask like really long, long, and by the time they get to the end of the question, the person being interviewed kind of forgot what they were asking. So um, what I try to do is what I tried to do as a prosecutor, which is um, let the witness or let the person who's being interviewed um, tell their story, Right. They got to tell their story. So I just kind of tee it up for them. You know, maybe I just have a list of maybe seven questions I want to ask them. And then I let them take over um, and, and tell their story. And that's how you do it in the courtroom on direct examination. You can't lead the witness. You can't suggest an answer to the question. It's got to be open ended, which is kind of the way uh, you're asking questions today. Now, if I'm interviewing someone who is not being cooperative or is sort of adversarial to me. Like, let's say as a, as a TV person, I'm interviewing an accused criminal and he's walking into the courtroom or she's walking into the courtroom. I'm probably not going to ask a nice open-ended question. I'm going to ask a leading question. Like, like, <laughs> Why did you steal all that money? Yeah. And then it gives them the opportunity to say, no, I didn't do it. Or maybe they'll tell us why. I don't know. But that's more of a, a cross-examination type question, which I've used on television from time to time. Um, but most of the time, it's it's open-ended. That's what dad does sometimes. Like, So he actually went to Hawaii. Like, I don't even know how long it was ago. Four four years ago, and he hunted down Lori and Chad Daybell, and like he was like they were trying to run away into like their hotel or whatever. So he had to like keep it very short, like "Did you kill your kids?" and like stuff like that to try and get it to like move faster along, because he you only have like this amount of time when you know yeah before. yeah like. Like if you were interviewing me and I was just rolling by like this, you'd have to ask your questions a lot quicker, right? Yeah. Otherwise I'll be gone. But the good news today is I'll stay here for all seven of these questions. Okay. And there might be a couple of bonus at the end, but. Ooh, so I get paid extra for that. Great. Tell dad to write the check. <laughs> Who is someone that you want to interview that you haven't? Okay. And it has nothing to do with the law has nothing to do with the law. And it's, oh, wait, I can take one second. He disappeared. <laughs> okay. Did you miss me? Yes. <laughs> it's this guy. You know who this is? No. All right. 
Who? What? Where? I don't know who this Are you? No, you won't know this one. But I'll give you one more clue, okay? You still may not know. Because I think this might be before your dad was born, too. Yeah, he just said he doesn't know who it is. <laughs> All right, all right. Oh, is, wait, is that oh, that's Matthew McConaughey, right? No, no. I said uh, what I said was like Matthew McConaughey, but this is my face on the person who I want to interview's body. This John Travolta. <gasps> oh, okay. Um, Saturday Night Fever. This, you know why? See this character he played. This was his first starring role. It was a guy. It was a character named Vinny Barbarino. Uh, Vinny Barbarino. And when I was growing up, everybody watched this show, and my name was Vinny, so everybody used to call me Vinny Barbarino. So, and I used to look like him a little bit. And and so um, that's who I'd like to interview, John Travolta. I thought you said, all right, all right, because I thought you were trying to be math. I thought you were like, yeah. You know what? I, I like that saying that so much that I just say it now, even when I'm not trying to be Matthew McConaughey. It's weird. I kind of picked it up. It's, like, it's a little tick I have. Mm -hmm. oh, all right, all right. I've interviewed him before. Yeah? Oh, well, of course you have. Of course you have. Um, what is one thing that you... That, wait, what is one thing that you think people don't understand about the legal system? Now, this is, this is really going to be in the weeds. You know what I mean by in the weeds? It's like, this is like... This is like the deep stuff. So, and I, and I think this is most jurors also. There are two attorneys in a criminal trial. There's a prosecutor and a defense attorney. But their jobs and their ethical obligations are much different, okay? As a prosecutor, okay, your job isn't to win. Your job isn't to send people to jail. Your job isn't to convict people. Your job is to figure out what the truth is and make that come out in court. And if you believe someone has committed a crime and the grand jury does, then your job is to bring the truth out. But if at any point you as the prosecutor have information that the person you're prosecuting didn't do it, you are ethically obligated to end the case right away. Now, a defense attorney completely different ethical obligation. A lot of people go into a courtroom, they look at a prosecutor, they look at a defense attorney, they think they're both doing the same job. They're both trying to figure out what happened, right? No. The ethical obligation of a criminal defense attorney is to do everything in his power to win the case for his client or her client, okay? So it... it the truth has nothing to do with their obligation. Their obligation is not to expose in the courtroom what really happened. Their obligation is to represent that client and keep them from getting convicted, whereas the prosecutor has an ethical obligation to get the truth out there. Now, sometimes uh, prosecutors violate that oath once in a while, but very different. I think that's the biggest misperception of our system of criminal justice, Emmy, is that people don't understand that. Um, have you what you do now, you understand yeah. now. So I one do. person at a time, I'm going to make sure everyone gets it. Thank I'll you. I'll spread the word for you, okay? That would be wonderful. Tell Matthew McConaughey. Okay. And, and, and Fonzie, uh, Henry Winkler, too. Okay, I will. <laughs> have you ever been to Idaho? And what's your favorite way to have our famous potatoes? Okay. Well, I do know you have been to Idaho, though. Have okay. I? For Lori's trial. No, I never made it out there. I've never been there. But uh -huh. I'm coming out. I will be there in 2024. I will make a trip to Idaho. But I can talk about potatoes. I know a lot about potatoes. Listen, I haven't been there yet. Now, I've covered a lot of stories out in Idaho. You know, for the first, you know, 19 years I was on court TV, we never covered a story out of Idaho. And now, like, every story is coming out of Idaho. What are you doing, Emmy? What are you putting in the water out there? I, I'm 
uh, in all the areas that this stuff has happened, we haven't been lived in, like, the city area in, so. Okay, so it's not you. Gotcha. Okay. That's turning Let's talk about potatoes. What's that? Dad was turning off our fireplace because it's right here and it's hot on my back. Oh, it's getting a little hot. <laughs> so you just so, saw his arm in the corner. but <laughs> well, we, we could do that in post-production. We can make it look like the fire's on. We could do that with special effects. It'll be flaming up. <laughs> exactly. So now, potatoes or potatoes? Which which one do you want me to talk about? Uh, potatoes. Potatoes. Okay. So growing up as a youngster, I really enjoyed French fries, right? I mean, French fries, like French fries, potato. I love French fries, right? That's great. Um, but then what kind of French fries do you like? Do you like the curly ones? Do you like the skinny ones? Do you like the shoestrings? Do you like the crinkle cuts? Do you like the steak fries? Do you like the cottage fries? Do you like the whole fries? There's so many fries. Um, and I've come to the conclusion um, that my favorite is somewhere between um the 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 skinniest and like a McDonald's, so um, a little thinner than McDonald's, but not the skinniest fries. So those are the ones I enjoy. However, when I became an adult, I became stricken with type one diabetes, thus a little problem with potatoes now because potatoes have a high content of what, Emmy? Sugar. Sugar. And the sugar comes from the carbohydrates that are in those potatoes. So you eat a potato, the carbohydrates, the high carbohydrates go in your body. And your body breaks it down, turns it into sugar. And if you're a diabetic, then all of a sudden you've got to like grab your insulin pump like this. And you got to start punching in all these extra numbers. And, you know, it just makes things a little more complicated. So I don't need as many as I used to. But my favorite way and I do it every year. I do it on a Thursday. What do you think I do on a Thursday? Eat fries? No, no, no. One Thursday a year. What do I do with the, those potatoes? What do I do with them? Do you eat them on Thanksgiving? Yeah, but how? Yeah. How do I eat them? How do, do I eat them? them? Mash them! <laughs> Butter in there. Maybe a little cream mixed in. And that's my favorite way now to really, really enjoy potato because I realized that it wasn't the French fries all along. It was the ketchup. When you come to Idaho this year, do you think you can make another exception? We can make it on a Thursday. So then we can eat potatoes together. Let's do that. Deal. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I have some bonus questions. Oh, oh bonus. Qu We're in bonus time. All right. Yep. Wait, let me hydrate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did you purposely make it that long? I was thirsty. Okay. <laughs> um, some of the trials and cases you cover are depressing. How do you keep from always being sad or depressed? This is what I focus on. And and this is and, and and I think this is what a lot of families do to try to get through it is I look at a criminal trial and it's, and it's a lot of murder trials that I cover. So some family has endured and suffered the most horrible loss possible. But it could be worse. It could be worse because if a family has a, a loved one that's a victim of a murder and then they go into court and the truth doesn't come out, right? The jury doesn't believe the person who was brought in did it. So there's no, there's no way for that victim and their families to get any sense of justice. They never get closure, but they don't get that sense of justice. So for me, that's what I focus on. I focus on let's get to the truth and let's get justice for the family. So there are times where it's tough and 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 your dad knows. There's there's a bunch of times where it's really really tough. But doing it day in and day out, my focus is the truth 
and the truth is justice. So that that's how that's how I get through it. And I always think that as difficult as it is for me, it's uh, infinitely more difficult uh, for the families in the courtroom. So uh, we keep doing it. Um, can you share a piece of advice with me? Sure. Oh, just any sort of advice? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here it is. Are you ready? Mm hmm. And I think you're. I think you're doing it already. But this is what. Th I think this is the most. This is the one thing that you, you realize as you get older and you have like grandchildren like me. Oh wait, I haven't shown you a picture of my granddaughter yet, have I? No. Well, I, I think we have to do that before we go on because it, it, it's it's all connected here. It's all connected. All right. I have, I only have 32,000 pictures of her. So mm. there she is. Oh, that's she's so cute. That's Maya. Yeah, yeah. She'll mm. be five this year. She's going to turn five. She's yes. getting there. All right. So the advice is um, there is no... There is nothing bad that happens like when I'm talking about bad things, like you're disappointed in, 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 in something that happens, right? Like whatever it is. And, and I'm talking about the things that are, that are not fatal. So anything short of someone passing away, it's not a big deal. It, it's, not, it's just not a big deal. Nothing is a big deal. You know, for instance, this is a big one, right? You ding up your car. You know, I used to love my car. Watch my car. Car gets in an accident. When I was 17 years old, I was like, oh, man, my car's in an accident. Now we just got a car totaled and we're like, oh, okay. Is everybody okay? All right, we move on. There is nothing that's going to happen. Don't sweat the small stuff. Even if it looks like it's big, like, you know, like, oh, that, that I didn't do well on that test or I got a B instead of an A. Or in your, or your case, you got an A instead of an A plus, right? It's not a big deal. It's, it's not a big deal. Everything's going to work out in the end. It's all going to work out in the end. And it's the same thing with me. And, and it's really come from raising children because, you know, your child does something like, oh, my goodness. And then, oh, they turn out great. So don't sweat the small stuff. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bring you down. Sempre avante. You know what that means? No. <laughs> All right. This is an Italian uh, saying, an Italian phrase. Uh, I'm Italian-American. So it was my grandfather. Passed it on to my father. who passed it on to me. Sempre avante means always forward. We're always moving forward and looking forward. Something happened back there. Don't worry about it. Sempre avante. That's good, really. That's a really good piece of advice. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Vinny. All right. So, so how, we did nine questions then? Is that what we did? Wow. That went by fast. All right. Well, that's good. And, and that's my name in, in behind you there. And, and you know what's great about that? What? You spelled it right. Some people, like my son, has the same name. He spells Vinny with a Y. V I N N Y. I'm like, is that how it's happen? actually spelled? Well, it, you could spell it both ways, but I don't know why you would put a Y there if you got an I and an E laying around, right? So you spelled it right. My son spells it wrong, but I don't worry about it. It's back there. I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking with me. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proudly supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.